This is Echo 3, and let's discuss landing on the Mund early in career mode. A bit of history, but on the 19th of July, 1959, the Apollo astronauts entered the orbit of the moon. We'll start by heading over to Mission Control and picking up a couple of contracts. There's one to orbit the Mun. That is almost a given if we intend to land there. There's also another contract for getting science from the surface of the Mun. These missions will work out well together. With our contract selected, it's time to design our Mun rocket. I have the Making History DLC, and it offers a low-tech two-kerbal pod called the KV-2P. It doesn't carry monopropellant or have reaction control wheels, but we'll do better with a pilot and a scientist for this mission. Because it doesn't have reaction wheels, I'm adding one and putting the parachute on top. Next, we'll add as much science for this lander as we can. We can add the Science Junior, Mystery Goo, Barometer, and Thermometer to this craft. After placing the science experiment, it's time to add fuel and engines to this craft. Honestly, it took me several hours to design a working craft for this mission. I was spending too much Delta V getting into orbit, and my designs couldn't land and return from the Mun. Speaking of Delta V, we'll need a minimum of 6,050 meters per second for this mission, but that doesn't leave any room for error. The upper stage will be our landing, ascent, and return stage, all in one. That means it needs at least 1,500 meters per second of Delta V. It will also need landing legs and electricity. Since we don't have solar panels on lock, this will be done entirely on battery power. The next stage is to help finish our circularization around Kerbin, eject us to the Mun, and do our capture burn. That means it needs at least 1200 to 1300 meters per second of delta V. A terrier engine would be more efficient, and maybe I should have used it instead of the skipper. The skipper, though, is able to charge the batteries while the terrier is not. In testing, I had trouble finishing the circularization burn using the terrier middle stage, but it would have been okay in this particular design. Lastly, we'll need to design our ascent stage. In general, that requires about 3,400 meters per second of delta V, but depending on your rocket and your launch profile, your efficiency may vary. For the center of the ascent stage, we'll have a skipper engine. Not our most efficient engine, but it is able to gimbal. Then we'll have a couple of liquid fuel booster sections using the lighter, more efficient Reliant. A quick word on radial decoupler placement. Placing them above the center of mass on the side boosters will help the boosters from hitting the rocket core when they decouple. I also like to have fuel tanks drain from the bottom to the top, helping to keep the center of mass as high as possible. Also, some fins to help keep the rocket more stable through its ascent. The ascent stage will still need more power to get this into orbit, so we can add a couple of solid rocket boosters. And with all that power, the craft will want to wiggle like a wet noodle. So we should add struts, and then we should add more struts. As a general guideline, if you add more boosters, you'll also need to be adding more struts. For this rocket, I'm not going to be running the liquid fuel engines at full throttle right away. I'm wanting to use the solid rocket, bo use the solid rocket boosters uh, mostly in the lowest part of the atmosphere. Then I'll throttle up the liquid fueled engines after decoupling the solid rocket boosters. I want mostly to use the skipper engine in the, upper, in the upper atmosphere, but since it is the only engine that can gimbal, I have it burning during the entire ascent. Most of the time though, it will be throttled pretty lowly. Actually, I end up having it throttled down to about 25% during the initial part of the ascent, and I have to use uh, uh, the custom window there to make that happen. You can see that right after I launch. Before we launch, we need to make sure we have the right crew and the right staging on the Collins. After testing various designs, I found that this style of rocket didn't do well with an aggressive gravity turn. Therefore, we'll be tilting east at a slower rate. I think the P-Pod and the upper stage have more drag, so a more aggressive gravity turn meant the ascent would be less efficient. You can see that I adjust the main throttle and the skipper's throttle. The ascent ended up being more complex than I would have liked, but it worked. So in this case, the complexity made the rocket less frustrating. We do not need to aim for a very high orbit, and in our case, a low orbit around Kerbin will be more efficient. Right now, I'm preparing to set up our circularization maneuver, and there it is. It's not a very big one. Once in orbit, we can plan our maneuver for the month. After placing the maneuver node and pulling the prograde marker 
about all the way to the MUNS orbit, I will be using the Find Maneuver Node editor at the bottom left of the screen. The bar on the right adjusts how sensitive it is to the input from the mouse scroll wheel. With this we can set up an efficient burn to low MUN periapsis. Throughout the mission, we will be trying to gather as much science from as many biomes as possible. And here we are over Kerbin, trying to gather all the science we can from NIT, because I hadn't used the Science Junior in uh, Mun or in the Kerbin's orbit yet, or Mun's orbit, so we'll be getting a lot of science from this mission. At Mun's periapsis, we'll burn retrograde to get into a stable orbit. I ended up splitting the burn into two parts based off of the rocket stages. The extra orbit ended up being nice just for gathering science, so it was a good thing, a win-win for. Uh, for the mission. Now landing on the MUN can get kind of tricky because it's not very flat really anywhere. So finding good flat spot is key to a successful MUN mission and with this lander especially being top heavy we need to find a flat spot otherwise we're going to tilt, tilt over and get stuck. Usually as a rule of thumb the center of a crater is a pretty flat spot so I'll be looking for uh, crater to land in. Also, we're going to try landing on the light side of the MUN. Uh, it's just a little easier to see what we're doing. Landing on the on the dark side can be tricky and it's hard to see just how far you are above the ground. Although the game does offer uh, an altimeter, you can change the, the reading there at the top to give you um, altitude above the terrain. And so we'll be, we'll be taking advantage of that. Now I'm going to land here on the edge of this crater. I was hoping that we could biome hop and use a little bit of delta V to jump over to a, a neighboring biome, which isn't very far, but we do not have enough to do that, so we'll just be getting this one uh, biome. I'm going to take landing here easy. I'm, I'm not using the Kerbal Engineer readout with the suicide burn, which is really nice, but I'm doing this all stock here. So I'm going to try and land as gentle as possible, especially with a top-heavy rocket. you just got to be careful. A, a rough landing will end up tilting this thing, and we'll be stuck here on the MUN with no way home. My scientist is going to get out here. We're going to gather as much science as we can. Science Junior, Mystery Go, Barometer. Uh, hey, a little, uh, little note here. When you're gathering a crew report from the pod, Make sure you get out and take the data and then store it back in the pod so you can take another crew report. All right, flag is planted. Let's get ready to head home. We landed about right on the MUN's equator, so we can launch due east 90 degrees to get back into a good orbit to return to Kerbin. Right after achieving orbit, I set up a prograde maneuver to return to Kerbin. I'm aiming for a periapsis between 25 and 40 kilometers. The peapod has a little bit of a blader, but a return from the MUN usually doesn't require any. Note too that we are leaving the MUN's sphere of influence in the opposite direction that the MUN orbits Kerbin. This is the most efficient way to get home. And as Kerbin comes up quickly, here we go. We are going to decouple the upper stage of our rocket right as we enter the upper atmosphere and then we get to watch the plasma show. Uh, we don't have to worry about our science experiments on the outside since all our science points are stored in the capsule itself. Oh hey, we are over a new biome. Let's get all the science we can from the mountain biome. We haven't got any of that so we'll get that before we recover the vessel. Alright, 786 science points for our early career MUN landing. That will give us a lot to work with for our next adventure. Thanks for joining me on this low-tech MUN discussion.